different harmony Those who share this hopeful landscape have come to understand that our lives are not separate from the land No, our lives are not separate from this land As soon as you hear that change in tone, you're done. Making maple syrup really is about 10% maple syrup, and the rest is plumbing. I mean, you're putting tubing and fittings and all sorts of things using either gravity or, or vacuum um, to pull the sap downhill. This has uh, somewhere between about 2,300 taps to it. We may process in a single day here 5,000 gallons of sap if we have a big day. On average, every tap produced about a half gallon of syrup, which is above average. You can really smell the maple coming off of this front pan. It's an amazing aroma, um, especially the early season syrup is really great smelling. Um, it permeates your clothes and your hair and everything, and then when you leave, you, you don't really get away from the smell. It's with you all the time. This machine is capable of doing 200 gallons an hour of concentrate. So it can go through a lot of material. So right. you got to be right on your, right on the ball. Yeah. You don't want to have it too thin or too thick. It sugars if you're too thick. Uh, nobody wants to have thin syrup either. So that's our main goal: nice quality product. Well, maple syrup is obviously like a huge, like ingrained in the the community. Mm -hmm. So I think it makes it's a logical transition to go to birch syrup. One of the products that is rare to the northern U.S. or even to the whole world is birch syrup, which comes from the birch tree. One gallon of birch syrup can cost about $250 versus it's about $50 a gallon for the maple syrup. Once you've got your syrup made, you can use it for a variety of things, but not exactly what you would use your maple syrup for. Birch syrup is more of a savory flavor rather than that rich sweetness you get with maple. So birch syrup you can use in things like salad dressings and glazes, things you'll, t you'll flavor up food with. We have a vibrant maple sugaring operation on the property. The Vic is part of the working landscape. The Paul Smith College students and community experience uh, forestry classes here. We have 2,800 acres of trails and our property has a multitude of habitats that you can find across the Adirondacks. One of the most important concepts of a working landscape is that the community living within that landscape has developed a strong sense of place and relationship with the land. It's a significant challenge to get people out into nature in the first place. So the Vic works really hard to make sure that all our trails and property are in pristine condition, allowing for all ages and all different abilities to, to use and enjoy and recreate in nature together. And the Adirondacks are founded on local and rural skills, strong sense of community, and an extremely strong connection to nature and the outdoors. The waters of the Adirondacks are legendary. We're helping stem the tide of invasive species coming into the center of the Adirondack Park. So the lakes and the rivers and the streams, the high quality water is really a focal point, not only for our culture, but also for recreation and, and beauty. And, but, but also it's, it's part of the, the economy of the Adirondack Park. We partner with the teachers in the, in the middle schools or the high schools to bring them out onto their own lakes where we do water sampling and we, we educate the students about water quality, water clarity, change over time. We really educate them about the resources that are in their own backyard. The working landscape strategy is to utilize what is already around us and transform it into something that can be shared and developed for the benefit of both the land and the people living on it. One such transformation is the Atlas Hoofed It Farm. Dan and Sarah Burke are not only farmers, but innovators as they refurbished an old military missile silo into a beer manufacturing facility. One of the unique parts of this farm is it has a uh, uh, Atlas missile silo on it and it uh, wasn't the reason we bought the property, but it just happened to come along. Back during the Cold War, uh, about two, three hundred of these were put in across the, uh, the, the country. Um, around here in Plattsburgh, I believe there was 12 or 13. What can you do with uh, something that was designed to do harm, and how can you make it beneficial? And that's kind of 
the motto of the farm is how to make a lot of these old, old, uh, old pieces of equipment benefit people. But one of our operations here is we lager beer, and it uh, happens to be about the right temperature for it. And so uh, we have uh, a deal with uh, Lake Placid Pub and Brewery where we uh, bring down beer and lager it here. And it uh, seems to be working out for us. It's just one of the other things that helps make money on the farm. No, our lives are not separate from this land. 